Hello, my dear students. Myself, Chinja Krishna, Assistant Professor, Department of Information Technology, Rajagri School of Engineering and Technology. Today, I will be discussing on transaction processing. This topic belongs to the course Principles of TGVS Design of S4 IDNC students of KDU. These are the contents I am going to discuss introduction, transaction, basic operations, read and write operations, two sample transactions, why concurrency control is needed, why recovery is needed, transaction states, the system law, commit point of a transaction, and desirable properties of a transaction. Let's go to the introduction. There are single user system. There is almost one user at a time can use the system. Multi user system. Many users can access the system concurrently. The concurrency can be attained by interlay processing and parallel processing. Interlay processing is the concurrent execution of processes in interleaved in a single CPU. Parallel processing processes are concurrently executed in multiple CPUs. Transaction. It's a logical unit of database processing that includes one or more access operations like read and write. A read is for retrieval and write is for insert, update and delete. A transaction is a set of operations may be standalone specified in a high level language like SQL, submitted interactively or may be embedded within a program. A transaction boundaries are begin and end transaction. An application program may connect several transactions separated by the begin and end transaction boundaries. The basic operations. Basic operations are read and write. Read item X. Read a database item named X into a program variable. To simplify our notation, we assume that the program variable is also named X. Next is a write item X. Write the value of a program variable X into the database item named X. Read and write operations in detail. Basic unit of data transfer from the disk to the computer main memory is one block. Read item X. The command includes the following steps. Find the address of the disk block that contain the item X. Copy that disk block into the buffer in main memory. Copy item X from the buffer to the program variable named X. Next is write item X. That includes, find the address of the disk block that contains the item X. Copy that disk block into the buffer main, main memory. Copy item X from the program variable named X into its correct location in the buffer. Last, store the updated block from the buffer back to disk. To sample transactions. So, coming to the transaction T1. First, do the read item x, then x will be incremented by a quantity n, that is x is equal to x minus n, after write the item x. Then, read the another item y, y is equal to y plus n, that is towards y, we will add a number n and store the result to the y, then write item y. Coming to the next transaction T2. It's reading the item x, x is equal to x plus m, then write the item x. Why concurrency control is needed? Several problems can occur when concurrent transactions execute in an uncontrolled manner. So, the problems are the lost update problem, temporary update problem, incorrect summary problem, and unrepeatable read. Lowest update problem. The lowest update problem comes when two transactions that access the same database item have their operations interleaved in a way that makes the value of some database item incorrect. So here two transactions T1 and T2. T1 reading the item x is equal to x minus n actually changing the data item value x. Then read the item x here changing by the transaction T2. Now comes the write item x, that is T1 is trying to write the data item x to the memory. 
after that read item x y after this write item x and read item i y t2 is writing the item x so the change done by the t1 is lost from the database because it's overwritten by t2 so here the final value of data item x is incorrect because t2 reached the value of x before t1 changes in its database hence the updated value resulting from t1 is lost next problem is temporary update problem this occurs when one transaction updates a database item and then the transaction fails for some reason the updated item is accessed by another transaction before it's changed back to its original value here transaction t1 read item x x is equal to x minus and indicates changing the value of x then writing the x then comes t2 reading the value of x changing the value of x writing x see the transaction t1 fails and must change the value of x back to its original old value meanwhile t2 has read the temporary incorrect value of x next problem is incorrect summary problem if one transaction is calculating an aggregate summary function on a number of records while other transactions are updating some of these records the aggregate function may calculate some values before they are updated and others after they are updated see t3 is doing an sum operation or aggregate function initially sum is equal to 0 read the a add a to the sum variable it continues last iterate data item x adding to the sum variable then data item y adding to the sum variable in between a quantity n will be subtracted from x and will be added to y but in the sum only subtraction is reflected because y is read before the addition of n to the y that is t3 reads x after n is subtracted and reads y before n is added a wrong summary is in the result that is sum is trying to add the value x and add the value y but n is subtracted from x and is added to y this addition is not reflected in the sum that's why an incorrect summary problem comes here the last problem is unrepeatability a transaction t reads an item twice and the item is changed by another transaction t dash between the two reads hence t receives different value for its two reads of the same item this may occur for example if during an error reservation transaction a customer is inquiring about seat availability on several flights when the customer decides on a particular flight the the transaction then reads the number of seats on that flight a second time before completing the reservation why recovery is needed here says about types of failures a computer failure a hardware or a software error occurs in the computer system during transaction execution if the hardware crashes the contents of the computer's internal memory may be lost second is a transaction or a system error some operation in the transaction may cause it to fail such as integer overflow or division by zero transaction failure may also occur because of error in its parameter value or because of the logical param programming error in addition the user may end up the transaction during its execution local errors or exception conditions detected by transaction certain conditions necessitate the cancellation of the transaction for example data for the transaction may, may not be found a condition such as insufficient account balance in accounting banking database may cause a transaction such as fund withdrawal from the account to be cancelled a program about in the transaction cause it to fail concurrency control enforcement the concurrency control method may decide to abort the transaction to be restarted later 
because it violates serializability or because several transactions are in a state of deadlock. Disk failure. Some disk lock may lose their data because of read or write malfunction or because of a disk read or write hard head crash. This may happen during a read or write operation of the transaction. Physical problems and catastrophes. This refers to an endless list of problems that includes power or air conditioner failure, fire, theft, sabotage, overwriting disk or tapes by mistakes or mounting of a wrong tape by the operator. This says about transaction states. First of all, begin transaction. Begin transaction go to the inactive state. Then may, the operation here comes read or write. After active state, it may come to the end transaction or abort. Abort means failed state or end transaction may go to the partially committed. If it's okay, it may commit and go to the commit state, then to the terminated state or partially committed state may go to the abort state and to the fail and to the terminated. So this is a state transition diagram illustrating the states for transaction execution. So transaction states are active, partially committed, committed, failed and terminated. So recovery manager keeps track of the following operation. Begin transaction. This marks the beginning of the transaction execution. Read or write. This specifies read or write operation on the database item that are executed as part of a transaction. End transaction. This specifies that a read and write transaction operations have ended and marks the end limit of a transaction execution. Commit transaction. This signals a successful end of the transaction so that any changes executed by the transaction can be safely committed to the database and will not be under. Rollback or abort. This signals that the transaction has ended unsuccessfully so that any changes or effects that the transaction may have applied to the database must be under. The system log, log or a journal. The log keeps track of all the transaction operations that affect the value of the database item. It's like a recorder. The information may be needed to permit a recovery from transaction failures. The log kept on the disk, so it's not affected by any types of failures except for disk or catastrophic failure. In addition, the log is periodically backed up to a cable storage to guard against such catastrophic failures. So the system log is used for the purpose of a recovery. T in the following session refers to a unique transaction ID that is generated automatically by the system and is used to identify each transaction types of log records. Start transaction T records that the transaction T has started execution. Write item T x old value new value records that the transaction t has changed the value of database item x from old value to new value this is used in the recovery time to reset of the value of x back to old value from new value next read item t x records that the transaction t has read the value of database item x commit t records that the transaction T has completed successfully and affirms that its effect can be committed to the database permanently. Last is abort, records that the transaction T has been aborted. Comment point of a transaction. Definition of a comment point. A transaction T reaches its commit point when all its operations that access the database have been executed successfully and the effect of all the transaction operations on the database has been recorded in the log. Beyond the commit point, the transaction is said to be committed and its effect is assumed to be permanently recorded in the database. The transaction then writes an item commit T into the log. Next is rollback of transaction. Needed for transaction that have a start transaction T entry into the log but no commit entry that is commit entry is commit T into the log. Next, very important topic, desirable properties of transactions. It's called acid properties. A for atomicity, C for consistency, 
I for isolation, D for durability. Atomicity. A transaction is an atomic unit of processing. It is either performed in its entirely or not performed at all. So, transaction may be nothing or complete. Second is consistency preservation. A correct execution of the transaction must take the database item from one consistent state to another consistent state. Intermediate state or half done is not permitted. Only one consistent state and transformation to one consistent state to another consistent state. Next is isolation. A transaction should not make its updates visible to other transaction until it's committed. This property, when enforced strictly, solves the temporary update problem we already discussed and makes cascading rollbacks of transactions unnecessary. Last is durability or permanency. Once a transaction changes the database and changes are committed, these changes must never be lost because of subsequent failures. That is, the changes should, should be durable in nature. So that's all with introduction with transaction processing. Thank you.